We've gone over the FBI's most wanted criminals before in the past, but we need to bring your attention to some dangerous females out there who are up to no good. Some of these women are responsible for crimes that are so unbelievable, you'll be wondering how the heck they pulled it off. All of these women are currently on the loose, and if you just so happen to cross their path and report them to the FBI, you could earn yourself some cold hard cash. From eco-terrorists seeking revenge by setting things on fire. From innocent looking grandmas trying to run criminal enterprises. Here are FBI's most wanted female fugitives. Number 11, Maria Bell and Francesconi. Maria Bell and Francesconi is on the run after an alleged kidnapping of her own son, Michael Alexander Reyes. This was after not being fully granted custody when she and her husband divorced. On August 31st, 2008, shortly after the birth of her son, Maria and her son went off to Argentina to visit her family. They had agreed to an authorized foreign travel agreement for a return to the United States, but she never came back. She then proceeded to cease all contact with the father of the child. The Supreme Court of Argentina demanded that Michael be returned to the U.S. immediately, but it's likely he's still in Argentina. In 2012, the whole ordeal was deemed as a kidnapping when the Florida-Miami-Dade Family Court issued a final judgment. Maria was born on July 9, 1984 in Argentina. She's 5 foot 5 and 110 pounds. You might be able to spot her by her tattoos on her lower back, lower abdomen, and by swiping on Tinder while on vacation in Buenos Aires. Number 10. Catherine Marie Kirkow Catherine is wanted for the involvement in the hijacking of an airplane since 1972 when she was on board Western Airlines Flight 701, which was flying from Los Angeles to Seattle. During this time, this white woman was a part of the Black Panthers. Her and her accomplice claimed to have been in possession of a bomb and demanded $500,000. She demanded that the passengers get off the plane in San Francisco, and they took the plane to Algeria of all places, where they were granted political asylum. Eventually, they were arrested while trying to go to France, and they were sent back to the U.S. for using a fake passport. Somehow, though, they managed to disappear once they got back to the U.S. She's been on the run ever since, and no one has been able to find her. Although the FBI doesn't currently have a bounty on her, it could be possible to get some kind of reward for bringing her in. It's likely the FBI have given up all hope on finding her and aren't even willing to post a possible reward. Hazel Leota, $5,000. Okay, now we're getting into the real hardened criminals that the FBI is offering cold hard cash for information leading to their arrests. Hazel Leota Head is wanted for the murder of a man in Benton, Louisiana. In 1998, she shot him in the back of the head while he was sitting in his trailer. A state warrant was issued by the 26th Judicial District Court of Bossier Parish, Louisiana for her arrest under the suspicion of murder in the first degree. She avoided prosecution by taking an unlawful flight and hasn't been found by the FBI since. She was also charged with arson in the state of Nebraska after burning down her boyfriend's trailer. The best thing you can do right now if you're dating Hazel for whatever reason is to turn her into the police for the $5,000. In addition to some of the awful crimes she's committed, she's often seeking men on personal ads and possibly has been married 10 times. You might be able to spot her hanging out at truck stops and she likes to take rides from truckers. You'll also notice she's a smoker, drinks vodka, and plays at casinos. Some believe she might be in the Wheat Ridge area of Colorado, so watch out. Number 8. Unknown Individuals Their identity is a mystery, and the FBI was hoping that you might be able to provide some information about them, despite only being able to offer about a $10,000 reward. And also these sketches. They're described as being two Hispanic females, with the first one being described as anywhere from 20 to 30 years old, curly brown hair, thin eyebrows, and pierced ears. The second individual is anywhere from 40 to 50 years old, approximately 5'7 with a larger build, black straight hair with some gray in it, thick eyebrows, and pierced ears. This is in regards to the disappearance of Sherry Papini, who was last seen dropping off her kids for daycare. Her cell phone was located about a mile away from her home, but Sherry was not in possession of the phone when it was discovered. A few weeks later after her disappearance, she was spotted trying to flag down a motorist while having a chain around her leg. She described these two women as being the kidnappers. It's rather an interesting case that we don't have a ton of time to go into, but some aren't totally buying her story. Sherry also claims to have been kidnapped and tortured during her kidnapping and was discovered with male DNA. There was even reports of her being branded as well. Let us know your thought about this case in the comment section. Hey there, you look kind of familiar. I've either seen you on YouTube or you're wanted by the FBI. 
Not sure what you're talking about. I don't look anything like those sketches. Yeah, I know who you are. You're that girl from Whack Universe, aren't you? Freeze. Number 7. Evelyn Guzman, $10,000. Our next bad girl almost seems to match the description that Papini gave, but that's just a coincidence. Evelyn Guzman is wanted for illegal drug trafficking, money laundering, and running a criminal enterprise in the city of Chicago. In 2004, the FBI sought to take down the gang she was working with, and 23 individuals were charged, while a few of them were able to get away. An arrest warrant was issued for her in October of 2006, but she's been on the run ever since. If you think you can find her somehow, or you consider yourself to be a snitch, there could be a $10,000 reward waiting for you. Number 6. Julianne Baldueza Dimitrion, $10,000 Don't let her innocent look fool you. She's one of the biggest scam artists on the loose, and the FBI is trying their best to track her down. She's only 4'11", but that doesn't mean she couldn't harm a fly. Her and her husband John Dimitrion, also wanted, were indicted in February of 2009 for mortgage fraud. They pled guilty to operating the fraud scheme in which they convinced people who were foreclosing their homes to voluntarily give them the deed with under the premise of making investments and improving their financial income. Instead, they improved their own financial income and used the victim's money to live a lavish lifestyle. It's believed that Julianne could be in Hawaii indulging in things such as designer clothing, expensive lingerie, handbags, and shoes. The kind of things you'd basically expect one of female fugitives to spend their money on. Number 5. Adriana Melendez, $10,000 Women don't always get the best reputation for driving, so it shouldn't be a huge surprise to see someone on here being accused of a fail hit and run. Currently, there's up to a $10,000 reward for information leading to the arrest of Adriana Melendez. In March of 2014, she accidentally struck a cyclist who was pedaling on a country road in Solano County, California. By fleeing the scene, the sentence goes from manslaughter to hit-and-run homicide. Vehicular manslaughter might have had a punishment of a year or so, but considering her circumstances, it looks like she's looking at some hard time for fleeing the scene. After the investigation took place, it was determined that Melendez was responsible, and in April of 2016, she was issued a federal arrest warrant. She responded by taking an unlawful flight, and her whereabouts are unknown. She's 5'5", 256 pounds, and is likely bilingual in Spanish and English. Some believe she might have headed south of the border to Jalisco, Mexico, which might make it hard to find her. Number 4. Idalia Ramos Rangel, $25,000 Our next four female fugitives on this list are worth some big money, and the FBI is going to be willing to pay some of the big bucks to get some of these femme fatales behind bars. Idalis Ramos Rangel, aka Big Mama or Mama Grande, has had involvement with the Gulf Cartel based in Matamoros, Mexico. She was also responsible for the delivery of more than 100 kilograms of cocaine to the state of Arkansas. Federal charges also come from Texas, most likely since she had to drive through Arkansas to make the delivery. Ramos was a sufferer of breast cancer, which means she's had a quite a bit of reconstructive plastic surgeries, but it's believed that this photo is what she most likely looks like. Currently, she's even been seen on Facebook and runs various businesses such as sports bars and travels to Monterey, Mexico for vacation. She's about 5'2 to 5'3 inches tall and is known for dyeing her hair blonde despite being a natural brunette. Josephine Sunshine Overraker, $50,000 we're stepping it up big time from $25,000 for Big Mama to $5,000 for this Eco Terrace. There certainly won't be any sunshine inside her prison cell once she gets a taste of American justice. Josephine was found to be guilty on several charges of arson and in playing a role with a radically eco-friendly group known as ELF, or the Earth Liberation Front. The main goal of this group is to burn down anything that isn't eco-friendly, which includes SUV dealerships, mansions near forests, ski resorts, meat packing plants, bioengineering laboratories, and so on. It's almost like PETA on steroids, folks, and it's not good. She set an energy facility on fire, and the group as a whole has caused property damage, resulting in tens of millions of dollars in damage. It's almost as if they want retribution for any fallen tree, and won't hesitate to put human lives in danger if they have to. The FBI has described them to be as one of the most dangerous groups in America, and they've been rather evasive. She may be trying to get a job as a firefighter, ironically, a masseuse, a sheep tender, or a midwife. Donna Joan Bora, $100,000. You thought that $50,000 sounded like a lot? It almost doesn't even seem as bad as some of the other ones on this list, but it's most likely her motivation that scares the FBI the most. 
But well, let's go ahead and double up to try to find this next female fugitive for 100,000. Born in the early 1950s in New Jersey, she had work experience in graphic design and silk screening. But something must have happened for her to turn out the way she did. She's wanted for her alleged participation in a violent demonstration at JFK International Airport, where she tossed a toxic substance into the eyes of a police officer, leaving him partially blind. Her affiliation with the May 19th Communist Organization, which is a Marxist-Leninist organization that calls for the armed overthrow of the US government, might have the FBI kind of concerned. She's considered to be armed, extremely intelligent, dangerous, and is thought to have photographic memory. All right, you guys, before we get to our number one most wanted FBI female fugitive, let us know in the comment section if you've ever dated a woman who you found out to be a lawbreaker. Someone you thought was a nice girl but was hiding some secrets about their criminal past. Tell us your story and maybe we'll feature you in an upcoming video. And number one, Joanne Deborah Chizamard, $1 million. If you haven't had luck hitting the lottery, maybe you'd have a better chance of finding Joanne Deborah Chizamard. She's wanted for actually busting out of a prison while serving a life sentence for murder. She was a part of a revolutionary type gang known as the Black Liberation Army, who's kind of like Black Lives Matter, but a whole lot more serious. She's been involved in several felonies, including bank robbery, gun, and vehicle violations. During the bank robbery, her and her accomplices shot some troopers. While one trooper was wounded, the other one was shot point-blank execution style. She was eventually apprehended, but managed to make a daring escape with the help of another murderer and groups of members from the Black Liberation Group. They were able to capture a prison van and order guards to let her out. It was a bold move, but that got her out safely. It's believed that Joanne is hiding somewhere in Cuba, which also makes it quite difficult to find her.